At least I find it easy. If you learn visually, then you'll find it easy. If a picture can make things clear to you, these are easy. Or easier than a lot of other stuff. Okay. We're going to talk about polynomial inequalities. <coughs> Which usually end up just to be quadratic. I think all the ones we do today are quadratic. Ah, <gasps> a cubic, yay! But the quadratics you're already familiar with, so they'll give you the idea. Excuse me a minute. We're going to talk about how to solve. How to solve a quadratic or a polynomial inequality. And here we have x squared minus 9x plus 14 is greater than zero. Well, we have to kind of look at all of the possibilities in order to understand. Here are all the possibilities. You might have x squared minus 9x plus 14 greater than zero, which is what you have here. But you could also have had x squared minus 9x plus 14 less than zero. And you might have had x squared minus 9x plus 14 equals zero. Those are the three possibilities. But what they mean, to understand what they mean, you just have to translate the math language into, zero, into, into English. And then from English into whatever language is your native language. Okay, so here's how you translate x squared minus 9x plus 14 is greater than zero. All greater than zero means is above, when you're talking about a graph, is above the x-axis. Okay, so, let's see, come, come over here, I guess. Put that in parentheses. Greater than zero means above the x-axis, and that's all. Less than zero, let me skip a place, less than zero means, bet you can guess, means below the x-axis. And equals zero, means on the x-axis. Okay. So all we're asking right here is, where is this graph above the x-axis? I can show you. Strictly above, notice there's no bar underneath. This is, they're only interested in where the graph is above, not on. So I'm gonna put a little circle there. Let me make this bigger.
Okay, now another code word though, that you have to be very careful of. Math is full of code. The word is where. Because the question being asked is where is, we'll just call these guys f of x. Where is f of x above the e, the x-axis? Or below? Or on? Where, where, where? This is the magic word right here. Where? Where is saying location? Where is your location? Location means on the x-axis. So we come back over here. All right. from negative infinity to there with a parenthesis because, because uh, X doesn't actually touch the X axis. And over here, going to positive infinity. Oops. Yeah, I need to stay consistent. Okay. All right, so the answer is negative infinity to what looks like it's probably two, but we don't know for sure. And then unioned up with, we're not doing increasing or decreasing, we're just talking about above or below. Whatever that is, it looks like it could be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and I bet it is, but you can't trust graphs. So that's gonna be our answer, all right? Our solution to this because that's where the graph is above greater than zero. It can't actually equal, I didn't put a bracket because whatever that number is for sure, X cannot equal it because that's where the graph would be on the X axis. And I can't put a, I cannot put a bracket here because then X would be on the X axis, which is not what this is saying. So, let's find the x-intercepts, that is the zeros. x squared minus 9x plus 14 equals 0. And 14 equals 2 times 7, or negative 2 times negative 7. Negative 2 plus negative 7 is negative 9. So that's how I factor this. Minus 2, minus 9. And then I solve. X minus 2 equals 0. X minus nine equals zero. Add two to both sides, x equals two. That's a nine? No, it's a seven, dinky. Don't call names. X equals seven. There. So, two and seven. 
That means two goes here and seven goes here. And our solution is negative infinity to two unioned up with seven to infinity. That is where, where, where the graph is above the x-axis. So just like always, if you're asked where something is happening, you give the answer on the x-axis. Even when it feels like it should be on the y-axis, you don't do it. Now let's do another one. Kind of get the feel for this. And here's the graph of what we're talking about. Here we have an inequality, x squared minus 2x minus 24, is greater than or equal to x minus 6. Well, there are two ways to do this. One is easier and one is more difficult. I vote for the easier one. So what I'm going to do is subtract x from both sides. and add six to both sides. So that I can get this, x squared minus three x minus 24 plus six is minus 18, right? Let's check. My negative 24 plus 6. Yeah, okay. Now we're going to have greater than or equal to 0. Now it's more understandable. You're asking, okay, where is this that's equivalent to this? Where is this above the x-axis or on the x-axis? Where is graph above or on the x-axis? Question mark. There. Now I'm going to graph this. X squared minus three X minus 18. And I'm going to hit zoom six to get a normal kind of screen back. OK, so there's the graph. And I guess I could make it a little a little bigger. So you could see it OK. There.
All right, now let's draw a picture of what we're talking about. We're asking on or above. Now, how did we code this before? X squared minus 3X minus 18 above X squared minus 3X minus 18 below X squared minus 3X minus 18 on. We're looking for this and this. So here's where the graph is on the x-axis, and here is where the graph is above the x-axis. Probably this is negative three. Oh, let's make it dark, negative three. Probably this is one, two, three, four, five, six. But we don't know for sure. But if it is, then where the graph is above or on the x-axis is going to be here. Negative infinity to negative three union six to infinity, but I'm only guessing. Okay, I am only guessing that that's negative three and positive six. I mean, it would be a good guess, you know. So let's see, let's make sure. X squared minus three X minus 18 um, equals zero because we need to find that point and that point. Well, 18, equals three times six. And I know that, oh, it's negative 18 now. So negative 18 equals negative three times positive six or negative six times positive three. And negative six plus positive three equals negative three. So, minus six plus three. Whoop, wiggle. X minus six equals zero. X plus three equals zero. Add six to both sides, X equals six. Subtract three from both sides, X equals negative three. Yep. So that I would declare is definitely not difficult. Let me bring this down a little bit so you can see the whole thing. All right, now, one more. Then we take a break. Now we've got a cubic, thank goodness. 
I wouldn't want you thinking that everything in the world is a quadratic. We have the same kind of problem here. I'm going to pull that over. Okay, so. 2x to the third minus x squared minus 28x is less than or equal to 28x minus 28x. So I subtracted 28x from both sides. Well, that'll give me 2x to the third minus x squared minus 28x is less than or equal to zero. Now let's see what this is asking before we do anything else. This is saying where's the graph below or on the x-axis. I'm going to write that out. Where is graph below or on the x axis. Question mark. All right, let's graph it and find out. But cubics often are a little more complicated. So they're more interesting. So 2x caret 3 right arrow key to come down or close parentheses minus x squared minus 28x yep okay i'm going to zoom six that just takes me back to the home screen well Okay, that's nice. Um, right, okay. Now this is a positive cubic. So it starts way down here at negative infinity, goes up, turns around, comes down, turns around, goes up to positive infinity. Um, Yeah, yeah, no, no quick way to show you the whole thing. Um, instead, what I'm going to do is just make the screen smaller. So, I mean, so it'll look bigger. So negative five, five, negative five, five. Here are my guesses. Negative one, negative two. Oh, that's going to be a fraction, isn't it? All right. Well, zero looks good, doesn't it? Um. Anyway, all right. I'm going to. Oh, I really want to see the whole thing. So let's zoom out. Where should we go? Negative 25. No, we don't need to do that. Not in the X direction. We're going to leave the X direction there, but we are going to expand in the Y direction. Almost there, almost there. This really is worth it to be able to see. Negative. 35. See, just guess. I don't have a 
science for doing this. Almost. Let's go down here, change that to negative 40, positive 40. And I'm going to change the scale to two or five, five, no, two. There now, almost. All right, well, I don't really, come on, don't be lazy, Barbara. All right, I'm not playing with it anymore. You get an idea of what it looks like. Doggone thing. Fine. No, oh, I screwed up. See, I shouldn't have done it. I shouldn't have done it. I shouldn't have done it. Where was Y max? It was 40. It's the Y min that needs to be deeper. Yay! All right, this is our graph. Doggone it. There now. there. Okay. <gasps> um, flatten. Now, this is a graph of 2x to the third minus x squared minus 28x. is less than or equal to zero, meaning on or below the x-axis. Okay, the ons we're going to do in blue, I mean in black. On. Below. That's where the graph is below the x-axis. Okay, so. There. And there, where that's negative infinity. Okay, so all we need to do is find that, that number and that number and that number for sure. So let's change this to two x to the third minus x squared minus 28 x equals zero. There's a GCF here, x. Okay. 
All right, and we set each factor equal to zero. So we're going to have X equals zero. And two X squared minus X minus 28 equals zero. Now probably we can factor this just fine, but why don't we use the quadratic formula because it might be faster. A is two, B is negative one, C is negative 28. So X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A, all over 2A. Okay, now I'm gonna really got that jolted up big, let's not. Equals negative negative one plus or minus the square root of negative one squared minus four times two times negative 28 all over two times two. That'll be one plus or minus. Bring on the calculator. Parentheses, negative one, parentheses closed, squared, minus four times two times negative 28. Two twenty five. That is a perfect square, I think. I think it's fifteen, but I'm not going to guess. Okay, calculator square root of two two five. 15. So, Okay, so what do I have here? X equals negative seven over two. And X equals four. So now we can put identities on these. This is zero. This is negative seven over two. Negative, well, it's best I can do. And this is uh, uh, four. So our solution should be negative infinity to negative seven over two. Bracket union bracket zero to four and brackets again because of the line under there we're looking for on the x-axis and below the x-axis
ah good time for a break.